Hello, everyone. Hello. Thank you for coming. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, uh, Dennis Hancock. Actually, Dennis was here before his election a year ago, about a year ago, when I had a private party. So um, he, Dennis won. He is a new, um, one of our new uh, county councilmen. He's a Republican. That is, is a partisan position. It still is a partisan position. So Dennis is not new to local government. He was the mayor of Fenton from 01 to 13. And um, he has a background of uh, that unusual term, fiscal accountability. He has worked with um, economic development. He was in charge of Fenton when things um, were do, Fenton was doing very well and they kind of moved up on the scale. Uh, I would have to assume in part due to Dennis's leadership. He is married to, Christine. He went to UMSL and um, undergrad and then from uh, school in Florida for his MBA. And uh, he's a great guy to have. He's a great guy to represent us in the county because um, certainly as far as fiscal accountability in the county, it's really tough and it's really important. So I uh, Hand this over to Dennis Hancock. Thank you, Steve. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank, thank you uh, for coming out this afternoon. It's uh, my pleasure to be here. I uh, always love to talk to different groups, and uh, I'm I'm not going to talk for a long time. Uh, I don't I don't like to do that. What I like to do is kind of give you a night, you know, give you the. 30,000 foot view of what's going on in county government, and then I'll just open it up for questions, whatever questions you might have. Um, Sue mentioned fiscal responsibility. Uh, if you don't know by now, you're, you're going to hear a lot more about it over the next several weeks. Uh, we're getting ready to start our budget cycle the 1st of October, uh, where the county executive will, as I like to say, he'll throw the budget over the wall to the council and then we have 90 days to make, figure out how to make it work. Uh, so by January 1st, we have to have a budget approved. Uh, going into the budget cycle, we are looking at, depending on whose set of numbers you uh, look at, we're looking at either a four, anywhere from 40 to $50 million budget deficit, a structural budget deficit. This is something that's been building year over year over year for a long time. Uh, but you know, it's it's been it's a testimony to how well the county's been doing that we've been able to live like that for a while. Uh, you know, revenues had, had been were good a long time ago, so the reserves were built up, and now we've been living on those reserves. Well, the reserves are just about gone. Uh, COVID money from the federal government uh, helped us get through one year, uh, but that money's gone. Uh, after this year. So we're, we're just going to be scrambling to figure out not only how to fix the budget deficit for next year, but what do we need to do long term? Because we can't continue to live beyond our means. I mean, it's, that's pretty simple. Um, so what, we, what we're, we're going to be looking at, you know, potentially is uh, cutting services. We're probably going to be looking at potentially raising tax rates or raising taxes. Uh, and to me, you know, I, I go back to, as Sue mentioned, I was the mayor of Fenton for 12 years. Uh, when I became mayor in 2001, we were doing essentially the same thing. We were living on, on our reserves. Uh, so the first year that we put a budget together, we sat down with the, count, with, uh, the board of aldermen in, uh, in Fenton, and we said, okay, we're gonna go through this budget line by line, page by page, department by department. And it was, a, it, it was as painful as it sounds. But at the end of the story, we started the year with an actually balanced budget, uh, not one that was, budget, that was balanced with reserves. 
We then came finished the year, the first year, with a surplus of nearly a million dollars. So we grew from there, and we added to our reserves, and we became, uh, you know, it's 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 not hard to do. It, you know, it's just a, a long, painstaking process, and so, you know, if we can uh, make that work for St. Louis County, then I think we're all going to win in, in, in the end. Uh, the good news is we have folks on the other side of the aisle who are also interested in that same process. They understand that we can't do this forever, uh, and I, I think, uh, you know, that's good to hear. Uh, you know, we can be as partisan as we, as we want to going into the election, but after the election, we all have to work together. And we all, you know, partisanship kind of goes out the window. So let's, you know, find a way to uh, work together and figure out where do we have common ground? And where, where can we, you know, get together and then build from there? You know, uh, if we come, from, come at things from opposite ends of the political spectrum, we're never going to get in the middle. So let's find, a, let's find some place in the middle we can start from and then go from there. Um, a couple of other things that we've been working on. One, uh, we uh, brought a bill forward a few weeks ago to uh, do a tax freeze for seniors still living at home uh, going forward. Wouldn't, it's not a tax cut. It's not a, a tax reduction. It's not a reduction in tax rate. It's not anything. It takes the, if you're paying $1,000 in property taxes today, next, two, next year and the year after and the year after and the year after until you sell your house, you're going to be paying $1,000. That's it. Uh, there's no, it's not going to uh, give you any relief this year. It gives you future relief. And that bill was voted down. Uh, and uh, so tomorrow night we're bringing it back. And, uh, you know, I think that when, we're, when we talk of now, when we talk about it, we'll also talk about it in terms of the, uh, called the Chapter 100 uh, program. Uh, it's, a, it's a tax relief, tax package for Boeing. Uh, Boeing has asked for, they want to expand, they want to build a couple of new buildings, they equip those new buildings, and uh, the total package is, the total spend is projected to be somewhere around $1.8 billion. It's a lot of money. And it's, it's something that, uh, you know, anytime a company like Boeing says, we need some tax relief to make an investment to bring more jobs to the community, I'm all for it. I'm all about jobs. It's I always have been. Uh, you know, when you, I learned a long time ago when I was doing economic development that the key to a community's future is jobs. If you have jobs, then you're going to have people coming into your community. They're either going to live there, they're going to commute there, which means they're going to spend money there, which means you're going to get more better restaurants, which means you're going to, your stores are going to do better, and all of the ancillary businesses that come along with those companies are all going to do well also. So. Uh, it's it's not a, a difficult formula. Uh, so, but when you look at it, uh, the total dollars that are going to be abated over the course of the next 10 years for Boeing would total about $155 million in tax revenue. But that's only 50%. That means there's another $155 million that's gonna go into the pipeline uh, for schools, fire districts, and St. Louis County and everybody else that. Uh, collects taxes. So, I, you know, when you look at it that way, you know, when you compare $155 million coming in from Boeing to three to $4 million that would be uh, foregone revenue for seniors, I think the decision becomes a lot easier, especially for those who might have been a little bit on the fence. So hopefully we can get enough votes to make that pass this time. Uh, let's see, what else is going on in the county? Um, the, uh, there's a, uh, Manchester is uh, getting ready to vote on an annexation proposal uh, for quite a big chunk of unincorporated St. Louis County that uh, is over between 141 and Manchester Road in that quadrant there. Uh, that'll happen in November, that vote will take place in November. Uh, I, you know, the, um, City of Manchester's done a, a nice job of, of 
of selling that proposal to the folks that are going to be impacted by it. So we'll see how that comes out. Um, and uh, you know, it's always nice to be able to reach out, and grab your local uh, elected officials. Uh, you know, I my area, the area I represent, goes basically from Olive to Jefferson County, and then from a little west of 141 to a little bit east of Lindbergh. So there's roughly 170,000 people that live in my district. So it's very difficult for me to get to know each and every one of them, and for each and every one of them to get to know me. So uh, if I'm in a city of you know, 30,000 or 40,000 people, maybe it's a little bit easier. So uh, we'll see what, uh, how that turns out. Uh, and then of course next year we'll, we, you know, we'll all be inundated with the ads and uh, uh, accusations uh, during the presidential campaign, which, uh, you know, unfortunately that's kind of where we are these days. Uh, but, uh, I haven't given up watching TV yet, but I might. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, uh, it, it wears on you after a while, and unfortunately, we're kind of in this never-ending electoral cycle now where uh, you know, it it's, takes a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort to, to run a race. Uh, I know uh, in my race uh, last fall, my opponent spent almost $300,000 for a county council seat uh, and, then, and still lost by a pretty good margin. So it, it uh, you know, I, I, number one, I don't know where she got all the money from. Uh, and number two, I'd like to meet those folks and talk to them about a better investment next time. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, so let me hear from you. What do you, what do you what's on your mind? Anybody have any thoughts, questions, concerns, anything you want to know about? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Are you hearing any rumblings about uh, city county merger? Together, any of that? Uh, for those of you, her question was, do we, have we, are we hearing anything about better together, the, the proposed city-county merger? The short answer is no. Uh, and I think that, uh, I think there are people in the county that would like to bring that back up, but I don't think they know how. Uh, I don't think they, that uh, uh, there's going to be uh, it's going to take a lot of political courage and a lot of political capital to make that happen, uh, to, to even bring up the conversation right now. I think it uh, left a, a very bad taste in a lot of people's mouths the way it was handled the last time. And so uh, we'll see, but it, no, I, I don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't think if it does, it's not going to be before next year's election. Yes, sir. What about consolidation of the 90-something? separate cities, towns, villages that we have in the county? Well, the, the, he's asking about, you know, what do we do about all of the small towns and, that we have in the community? And, and uh, you know, I, that's a hard question. Because it, it, you have those, those little communities, and, you know, I think, you know, when I think about it, I, I think of, because I, I have, fair amount of unincorporated area in my district. But when you look at, you know, if you drive up on uh, Natural Bridge from the airport and go east, you drive through about 25 different cities. There's just like one on every other block. And, you know, I think they were probably formed for a, a good reason. You know, if they didn't feel they were being represented by this government or that government, then they formed their own government. Well, I think what's happened over time, and I think you can, you can demonstrate it pretty clearly, they don't have a tax base, so there's no property taxes being generated, and they don't have any businesses to generate sales taxes. So uh, it's very difficult for me to see the justification for uh, continuing to do that. Again, but again, it gets back to political capital. Who's in political courage? Who's going to who's going to suggest that these 25 cities consolidate into one city? Uh, you know, then you you run the risk of if it doesn't happen, you just lost a lot of 
support from, from all these uh, other politicians in these small cities. Uh, there was an election, was it last week or the week before, uh, where Normandy absorbed yeah, Glen, Glen Echo Park. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so that happened. I know there have been, you know, uh, St. George uh, disincorporated a few years ago, uh, Peerless Park disincorporated a few years ago. So I think there, there, are, you, there may be the beginning of some momentum, but it's going to be a long time before uh, that process happens. The one thing that I've always said, since a lot of these uh, uh, cities generate most of their revenue from the, the sales tax pool uh, and without going into the mind-numbing uh, discussion of, of the whole sales tax uh, pool issue, uh, there's a uh, group of cities in St. Louis County that if they, any sales tax they generate goes into this pool and then it's allocated out based on population, and that's the rough explanation. Anytime the word logarithm appears in a piece of legislation, you know it's a lot more complicated than that. Um, and then there, there are cities that get to keep a percentage of their revenue that are in what are called point of sale cities. So uh, it, it, uh, some cities benefit greatly from that. Some cities pay a lot more than they, loop, than they get. Uh, for example, in the city of Fenton, we used to lose about 65% of the sales tax revenue we would generate. Uh, a few years ago, we got some relief from the legislature, and they capped it at 50%. So we can't lose more than 50% of what we generate, uh, which <laughs> I still think that's grossly unfair, but that's just me. Um, you know, and that's really one of the arguments against city-county consolidation. If the city comes into the county, are they going to be a pool city? Well, they may be, which means that all of these little cities around the area are going to find themselves suddenly with very little revenue, and because uh, the county or the city has a much bigger population than any of them. So I think it, you know, they they may not be all that in favor of the city, but, but we'll see. Yes, ma'am. I may have been remembering this incorrectly, but when we had to pay our personal property tax on our car, mm -hmm. it was a year older, but it more than doubled. Mm -hmm. And I was under the understanding that it was they didn't have a specific rule or whatever in place, so they just went by the Kelly Blue Book. Has anything been done to correct that problem? Unfortunately, that's that's a state problem. Oh, too bad. And, and same with same with real property taxes and how they're assessed. That's all uh, driven by the state legislature. The uh, but yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, my car didn't get any newer. Uh, and if I had tried to sell it for more, I probably wouldn't have gotten more for it. But it uh, uh, but yeah, it's all you know because of COVID and the supply chain issues and everything else. There was such a shortage of new cars. That they went, that used cars went up in value, uh, you know, greatly, and this became a, uh, a nightmare scenario for a lot of people. Yes, sir. Do those taxes ever go to zero? <laughs> cars, I know you pay for them when you buy. The next year, the next year, the next year. Sooner or later, it's got to stop. I own a 2008 Chevy HHR that uh, we bought new. It's my grandson's car, and we're still paying property, personal property taxes on it, so I'm, I'm going to say probably no. Sometimes you're going to be paying less than the home of zero for it. Maybe live long enough to do it. Well, the logarithmic yeah. factor uh, comes down to zero. Yeah, theoretically, they should be paying me at some point. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yes, sir. There's a uh, lot of issues with temporary tax. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been, we live in several other states. Nowhere that I live, we're then such a stupid, I'll call it, mm -hmm. uh, plan here where you buy the car but you don't pay mm -hmm. at that time a tax. Right. So somebody buys the car, goes to get the 
play it and oops, it's a big bill weighing it down. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that's a state problem. Well, I think, I think they addressed it though. Did they? Yeah, I believe that's been addressed now, but you can, uh, but it's gonna take some time to get it implemented because they have to make each dealer in the state has to be, be trained and, and get the you know, software they need and all that kind of stuff to actually issue tags. And so that's, but it's coming and, and it's long overdue. I'm right there with you. I, I see tags all the time for two or three years old. Is there an effective date for that? Um, my understanding is they're targeting two years from now. Uh, you know, it's been signed, the governor signed it, but it's just gonna take a long time to implement because of, it's a, there, you know, imagine, you know, you drive around some of the, some of the areas, and you see a, a car dealer on just about every corner. Uh, and so those people all have to become part of the system. And so it's gonna take time to get them there. But the good news is it's coming and they've actually addressed it. So uh, hopefully, it, hopefully it happens faster than that. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I was, you know, thought if I bought a new car, keep some money aside for the taxes because it, it's coming. You know the bill's coming and uh, you just have, you, you gotta do it. But, yes ma'am. Well, I thought that something was happening with the county headquarters. Are they looking at doing something? It's getting older. What kind of plan is going on with that? When Nancy's asking about uh, what they call Project Sunshine, and that is the new St. Louis County St. Louis County Government Center that they're considering building. Um, you know, we have a, as I said earlier, we have a 40 to 50 million dollar structural budget deficit. So the county wants to spend some six to seven hundred million dollars. Those are in today's dollars, not you know, five years from now, to build a new. This is, these are my words. Build a new monument to government. It, it, uh, uh, the, what's driving it is in 2016, I believe it was, the county received notice from the city of Clayton that they were not in compliance with the city's fire codes uh, because the building doesn't have any sprinklers in it. And so the, count, the city uh, gave them 10 years to in, to put sprinklers in the building. Well, we're now some six years down the road and nothing's been done yet. So the plan is apparently rather than spend, and depending on who you talk to, and I've been in the facilities business for 25 years almost, uh, they're telling us it's gonna be $300 million to retrofit the building with sprinklers and to abate the asbestos that's in the building and all that stuff. And so it just makes more sense to build a new building. Now, when I, the last time we talked about it, my question was, have we gotten any bids to actually see what the real cost would be? And the answer, of course, is no. So before we spend a dime on a new building, we need to get real numbers to see what it's gonna to cost to retrofit the building. And you know, then it raises the whole question. You know, one of the things that, you know, one of the benefits, I guess I should say, of, of COVID was we learned that people can work remotely in a lot of cases. You know, they can work from, work from just about anywhere with a, you know, with a computer and a phone and, and all that. I did it, I, I still do it. But it, it, it a, you know, so do we need a nine-story building to, to, to do county services? Probably not. Do we, you know, can we uh, cross-train some of the people that collect the taxes or issue permits and all that kind of stuff to do more than one thing at a time? And the answer is probably so. And can we do that in cheaper real estate than in downtown Clayton? Because the only people that have to be in downtown Clayton by charter are the county executive and the council. None of, no other county offices have to be in Clayton. 
So there's a lot more to come on that. And, and I, I, the, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know, if it, if it came up for a vote today, I don't think it would pass. Uh, I think there's, I know the three Republicans would vote against it, and I think that probably at least half the Democrats would. Because I just don't think, I don't think we have, any, have the answers we need to make a real decision. So. so what's going to happen when the next four years fly by and you don't, haven't done anything? Well, that we don't know yet. You know, it's, <laughs> it, 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 we may have to pay fines to the city of Clayton. Uh, we may have to, uh, you know, work a deal where we get an extension of some sort. Uh, I don't think the city of Clayton wants to see the St. Louis County government move out. Uh, so I, you know, for those of you who haven't been to Clayton, uh, the building where, where the county bu government building sits in the heart of downtown Clayton. I mean, you can you can walk to just about anywhere from that building in Clayton and, and get there. But uh, you know, so I think that that we'll see. It's it's kind of the building. There 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 are re other reasons to consider staying where we are. The building is connected physically to the police uh, headquarters and to the uh, justice center where the court, courthouse is and uh, then across the street the uh, uh, county jail uh, those are all connected buildings and there's one set of utilities that serves all of the buildings so we would have to come up with a plan to uh, provide heating and cooling and water and electricity and all that stuff to all of those buildings uh, independently of each other so you know if we if we separate out of that if we move out of that building it's going to it's going to be expensive uh, I have one more follow. sure so have they been looking for land to put a new county government center not that they've shared with us mm -hmm. uh, what they the, what they've talked to talked to us about is the county also owns the parking lot across the street right. so what they're talking about is building something there, and then after that building is is, is finished, tearing down uh, the, uh, the, the the existing building and, or selling it in place. So, uh, but then if you know if somebody else is going to buy it, why can't we just stay there and retrofit it? But again, that's just me. So, yes, ma'am. Do you have a newsletter that? Send here that maybe our staff could distribute for the residents. We are what's going on in the county. I'm actually working on, on that. Uh, Mary Catherine, who's my assistant, is working on that. And we, we were supposed to have our website up four months ago, and that's kind of there have been some issues with the IT system in the county. Uh, so, you know, uh, so we'll see. But yeah, we're working on, on getting that out because. I think it's, it's one of the things that, that I prided myself on for 12 years as a mayor of Fenton. We had our city newsletter that came out every month, and every month I wrote a column in that newsletter. And I can tell you, some of them were a lot better than others. Um, you know, you, after you do it for a while, you, you sort of run out of creativity. Um, and, uh, but, you know, I, but I, I, I thought it was, it was absolutely necessary for me to do that to communicate with the people that I represent. And I really want to get back to that in, in this role. Uh, and it's not so that, you know, you can hear my opinions on everything. It's more just so you know what's going on. It, it's not about uh, my opinions, although I'm, I'm usually not shy about giving my, expressing my opinions. But if we, you know, if you don't know something's going on, and we haven't done it, and, you know, not unlike most governments, the, the county doesn't do a great job of telling people what's going on. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, we need to do a better job of that. And if it falls on me as, as an individual council member to do that, then I'm happy to do that. But we just, we, it, it just takes some, takes some effort and it takes the, uh, the ability to do that. So, but, uh, you know, stay tuned, we'll, we'll get there. Anyone else? You, you mentioned uh, cities combining and issues with. What about uh, have all these separate police departments, fire department, 
I know there's been some case in the police department, mm -hmm. but um, it, it just seems like really a waste of money to pay for all these fire chiefs, police chiefs, and all the. Uh, well, that, and that's part of the, when you look at the big picture of St. Louis County and all of the different governmental entities that exist in St. Louis County, it's not just cities. You have fire districts, you have sewer districts, you have school districts, you have uh, other special taxing districts that are created for a specific purpose. Uh, and yeah, I mean, when you start adding them all up, it, comes numbers into the hundreds of all these different uh, governmental and quasi-governmental entities that are out there. Uh, you know, I think that when you have, uh, what we did in Fenton was we actually abolished our police department in 1996 and contracted with St. Louis County for police services and we've been doing that ever since. Uh, to do a really good job, I think it was after the first, it was the 15th anniversary of our, uh, of signing that contract, and we looked at the numbers and what we were paying in 1996 for our own police force and what we were paying St. Louis County in 2010 for their services, and we just had leveled out. So it took 15 years for the county that was 15 years of savings uh, over the, 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 the numbers in, from 1996. So it, it, it's a good, it was a good deal for us. And uh, I think there are probably more municipalities that have, have gone that route over the years. Uh, you said there's the North County Police Cooperative, which was a consolidation, consolidation effort in some of the cities in North County to uh, combine police forces. and. Uh, that seems to be working okay. Um, the but you still have you know a lot of these small towns, small cities that have police officers who aren't accredited. Uh, they don't have you know they're part time because there's not enough money in the municipality to pay them for pay a full time officer. Uh, and it just you know it it doesn't get better. And so uh, I, anything that can be done to encourage those those folks to look at alternatives, I. You know, because what, what's, what eventually ends up happening is, and I, I don't mean to sound racist or anything like that, but if you look at a, it's a city like Kinlock, you know, Kinlock is 200 people. Uh, they have a police force in name, uh, but the St. Louis County Police actually provide police services there, but they don't get paid for it. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a mess. It, it absolutely is. And so what, you know, what can we do about that? Well, again, we can't force anybody to do anything. And so, but we can encourage them and we can show them how they can uh, save money and how they can do things in a better way. You know, and, and, you know but then there are other municipalities around uh, that have their own police force and they seem to do fine with it. Uh, you know, I, I look at Manchester and town and country and so you know places like that that you know they pay their officers well and they and they, they in turn they get better officers and uh, you know and, and fortunately uh, we live in a, you know this area is pretty safe and so you get people that you know they get paid well to, to work in this area and you know let's face it being a, being a police officer is a tough job you know. Uh, the city just passed an, or, you know, passed an ordinance a few weeks ago uh, that if you don't have a concealed carry permit, if you're under under age, you can't carry it, openly carry a firearm. Well, if you have a police department that's down several hundred officers and they can't, you know, they're they're having trouble responding to real crimes already. Do you think they're going to run up, you know, come up on a group of six or seven young thugs? who are care openly carrying weapons and say, sorry boys, you have to put your guns down? I don't think so. But these aren't, the problem isn't that they have a gun. The problem is they don't respect authority. And that's really uh, the challenge. I, and that one, I don't know how you solve that. So, any other questions, comments, thoughts? Well, I have another question. Yep. How effective 
are the satellite counties, satellite offices, are they cost, um, are they a, a good thing for the county to have, and how many are there now? You know, there, there's, the counties has satellite offices in South County, North County, uh, Central County, which is around north, north, the old Northwest Plaza area, and then in Clay. Um, I think there's another one that's coming to West County at some point in time, if it's not already there. Actually, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not about being cost effective, it's about providing service. And you know, at the end of the story, that's what government is. You provide a service. And if you do a good job and you do it cost effectively, great, everybody wins. Uh, but they, they do work, and, I, and I, I know it's a lot easier for me, on, except on Tuesdays, uh, if I've got to conduct business with the county to go to the South County office than it is to go to Clayton. Uh, it's a lot easier to park in the same parking lot than it is to park in downtown Clayton. Uh, so, I, you know, I think that uh, from the perspective of being able to provide service and being uh, out in the community and being able to help people, I, I think it's a, it's a great, uh, you know, it's really nice to have that. Uh, the other thing that the county's doing, in addition to these satellites, is they're also building three new police stations. Uh, one in South County, one in North County, and I believe one in West County, uh, somewhere, to uh, house the different precincts. And these are gonna be state-of-the-art facilities, because we were in buildings that we were renting that, uh, you know, you expect to see Dateline show up and do a story on them. You know, they were, they were in such bad shape. And we were asking our police officers to come to work there. You know, it, it's not a good thing. So we can uh, get them some better facilities. Yes, sir. They rationalize new precincts when they don't have enough police officers now. We're, the county's not in bad shape. We're, we're down about 100 from our, from our budgeted level. But it's, now we're kind of to the point where it's, we're churning. I mean, you know, we're, the numbers have been flat for a good while. So we're, we're not losing anymore, but we're not gaining on that, that budget number, which actually may help us when we have our budget conversation. So, but it's, it's uh, you know, the, if you don't have good facilities and you don't have, you know, if you're telling people to come to work in a dangerous job and, oh, by the way, the, the building you're coming to is full of mold, uh, so don't use this, the shower facilities. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's when you're gonna lose them. And they're certainly not gonna stay if they get an opportunity to go someplace better. So. Anything else, any other questions, comments, concerns? I'm yours for as long as you need me here. But thank you all very much for your time, for your attention to the questions. I really appreciate it, thank you.